Hello, so I'm going to show you how to set up a Show My Homework quiz. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is counterintuitive. It is not to panic. Uh, everything is really easy to use. And if you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. So this is my dashboard, my homepage. And I want to set a homework, which is helpfully um, colored green here. I'm going to click on that. And then this allows me to set any kind of homework. Because I'm setting a quiz, I'm going to choose the quiz option and click on Create Quiz. So this happens really quickly. I can see anything that I've used before and I can give my quiz a name. Now, this is really important. So let's imagine that I'm going to do it on the poem Ozymandias. Um, it will be really helpful when I want to find these quizzes later to choose exactly the right title. So I might just be doing a quiz on the context. Um, when I have a precise title, it's going to be easy to find again and reuse, because that's the major benefit of having a quiz. Right, now I need to give the students some instructions, and my instructions are nearly always this. Do the quiz three times or until you have scored 100%. Now the reason that's important is students want to have retrieval practice and it's not just about getting right answers, it's about getting everything absolutely right and what psychologists call overlearning. When you overlearn something it stays there forever. Uh, next I'm going to choose time limit for my quiz and for now, I'm going to ask you always to choose the longest, 120 seconds, um, because that will give you time to use it in the classroom. So sometimes you won't want to use it as homework, you'll want to use it as a preview, and uh, it can be temperamental, but if you have 120 seconds, the questions will always stay on the board long enough. Uh, then you set your classes, uh, so they appear as a drop-down, and... Uh, I'm not going to do that now in case I actually set it for my kids before I uh, before I do it. And you set a due date, okay, when it's going to be due by. Okay, then I simply scroll down and I'm going to add a question. So, um, who wrote the poem? Uh, now, my correct answer is Shelley. Uh, now I'm going to choose a range of incorrect answers. Uh, so let's imagine I put in Wordsworth. Uh, and then I can choose another wrong answer, which could be um, Ted Hughes. So I'll just put Hughes. And another wrong answer, um, which will be uh, Shakespeare. Okay, now this then appears as a quiz question, and there'll be four answers. I'll just click done, and I'll actually, I'll... Right, okay, so I've saved it as a draft, and I can now preview that quiz. Here we go, so now I've got my questions, I've got a two-minute counter. Uh, now, the reason I've shown you this is the real skill in writing your alternatives is that you want your students um, to reveal their misconceptions to you. So now that you know that, um, Shelley is writing um, in the very early 1800s, uh, Hughes is a 20th century poet, Wordsworth is also writing in the early 1800s, and Shakespeare is writing in the late uh, 1500s, early 1600s. So you can see I've included two options here which don't really expose misconceptions. Um, my students would be have to, would have to be really, really ignorant to opt for either Hughes or Shakespeare. And so really I'm just giving them a 50-50 chance. And that's a poor construction of my quiz. Okay, so I wanted to show you um, how not to frame your answers here. So let's exit that. And we shall look at some actions up here on the right. 
which will allow me to edit my homework. OK, so I'll click on edit. Uh, I want to change that so that the, the alternatives are plausible. So I've got Shelley Wordsworth. Um, let's change it to another poet writing at the time and then another poet writing at the time. Um, in fact, I'm not even sure I've spelled that correctly, but there you go. Um, so I'm using that to illustrate how you try to choose uh, alternatives that will really test um, your student's understanding. OK, well, here is my... Right, I've now got the choice, if I scroll down, to publish the assignment or to save it as a draft. I can only publish it once I've assigned it to a class. But if I save it as a draft, um, I can now preview the quiz as it is without having given it to any class yet. So here we go. That was the first question. And we'll just click on Shelley there and get to the next one. Uh, so you can see how it appears for the students. But also, I can't emphasize this enough. This can be your starting activity at the beginning of another lesson. So you don't have to set it as a homework in and just use it as a homework. Uh, it, it will work as your DNA or do now activity at the beginning of the lesson. And if you set that two minute timer, it will give you time in class to ask students to give you that answer. Right, let's finish the quiz and see what happens next. So I'm going to get an answer wrong and then continue and it gives me my score um, now the crucial thing here is that students get to do the quiz three times so they can see if their score is going to go up that's quite motivational for most students um, and i really recommend uh, forcing your students or rewarding them if you like for doing the quiz three times in order to get a higher score 